Hello everyone. Welcome to JGK Master Class. Guys, in today's video, we will learn about the first order spectra and second order spectra in proton and MR. How we can differentiate the two different type of spectra and uh, to find out the examples of uh, the spin systems AX, AB, AME2 and A3X2 spin systems. Some examples related to it, how, how we can categorize these spectra as first order and second order spectra and uh, how you can find out the category related to it. The topic is very important for MSc Chemistry students and you can find many questions related to it in your previous years of question paper. So we'll be solving here some of your previous year questions and uh, you just watch the video till the end. Don't skip it because it is very important. Step by step, you will understand everything about the spin systems. And if you haven't subscribed yet my channel, then do subscribe it and share it with your friend. Don't forget to press the bell icon. So we'll be starting with the very first problem. Mention the criteria required for a proton NMR spectrum to classify it as first order. What are the criteria are there for the first order spectra that we will see? How you find out that this is a first order spectra? First point which you will look for the frequency difference that is we will represent del nu between any two coupled resonance must be significantly larger than the coupling constant means we will see the between the two signals the del nu difference the chemical shift different and the ratio of coupling constant should be greater than 6 if it is greater than 6 we will consider it that it is a first order spectra. So the value you can get it from the spectra for the coupling constant and then you and then you can find out whether it is greater than 6 or less than 6. Second point is symmetry about the midpoint of the multiplet. So whatever is um, uh, multiplet you are getting there, if you have a symmetry with respect to midpoint, then we will consider it a first order. The maximum number of lines here for the multiplet is related to the formula 2 to power n. The actual number actually the lines will be lesser than this because of the overlap here. So we will see that usually if n is 2, let us say for example, 2 is to power 2 means you are supposed to get the 4 lines here, right? The maximum number of lines are 4. But in practice, we do not get 4 lines. Instead, the center 2 lines will come closer and will give you one single line with the almost double intensity. So that is called triplet. So, doublet of doublet will give you a triplet actually. We will see that also. The line intensities of multiplet is cor corresponds to the Pascal's triangle. So, if you have a knowledge of Pascal's triangle, then you can think of that this is a Pascal's triangle where you can see when n is 0, it is 1, n is 1, you will get 1 is to 1 intensity ratio. So, what is n here? n is the number of neighboring protons. So, number of neighboring proton with respect to that you will get the splitting here. If n is 2, the numbering of uh, proton that is splitting will be triplet in the ratio of 1 is to 2 is to 1. So, if you have studied this already, you can think of the first order and second order spectra here. So, let us say here n is 2, you are getting a triplet instead of getting a doublet a doublet, right? One line, the inner two peaks are merged together to give almost the intensity 1 is to 2 is to 1. Similarly, if n is 3, the number of neighboring proton is 3, then it is going to split the neighboring proton as a quadrate. So, you are getting here a quadrate in the intensity ratio 1 is to 3 is to 3 is to 1. Okay, So, like that, the intensities for the first order spectra will follow the Pascal's triangle, Pascal's intensity ratio. So, if you are getting such kind of uh, peaks in the spectra, it is a first order spectra. J value will be directly measure, you can measure it from the line spacing between the multiplets. So, here if you notice, uh, there are two J value and each J value will be the same here between the spacing between each multiplet here, right? Here three J value will be there and here for pented you have one, two, three and four J value. The distance between the outermost line in the multiplet is the sum of the individual coupling. So, outermost line you can notice here. The, uh, the, this distance is the sum of individual 
right coupling so individual coupling is for this is 1 2 3 4 4j so 4j sum of 4j is the distance between the outermost line so like if uh, your spectra is showing all these points that your spectra is a first order spectra and you can say this is the criteria for the spectra to be a first order right so it, the symmetry along the midpoint right you can see midpoint is this and it has a symmetry total number of line should be equal to 2 to the power n but it is actually less uh, due to overlap follows the pascal triangle intensity ratio j value can be determined directly from the line spacing here and you can see the sum of individual coupling the distance is equal to the sum of that coupling basically the del nu divided by j ratio should be greater than 6 it is a first order spectra so these are the criteria and you can mention these point now we will see in the next question where they are asking you uh, they have given you the spin system here you have to find out a respective example for each spin system according to the Popel's nomenclature so we'll see first ax spectrum so basically Popel's notation means you can find these three letters in this a m and x like uh, if you are talking about AS spectrum in alphabet A and X are widely separated. So normally first order spectra will give you AX spectra. AB like in alphabet AB is very close together. So you will have here AB spectra is for second order spectra. AM2, AM2 is again M is in the center quite separated well separated from A. So again it is first order spectra. Similarly you can notice A3X2 is like it is widely separated alphabet A and X it is a first order spectra so first order spectra you have uh, these parameters like you will have coupling constant value for A X and uh, each will is split as a doublet into each other so let's say this example where you have two protons having two different neighboring environment and uh, each is going to split is as a doublet right so 1 plus 1, n plus 1 rule, it follows. n plus 1 is you have a neighboring proton 1, 1 plus 1 is 2. So the, your neighboring proton is going to split as a doublet. Similarly, this proton is going to split as a doublet, 1 plus 1. So doublet and doublet you are getting for both the protons. And it is having symmetry, widely separated. So it is a first order spectra. For second order spectra, that is AB here. The intensities will be more normally distorted. You don't have here the n plus, it doesn't follow n plus 1 rule. And the inner peaks are larger than the outer peaks. So if you notice this example where you have germinal protons in different environment. One is uh, in the plane of Cn, other is in the plane of Cl. So it is a non-equivalent, magnetically non-equivalent protons, right? So if you don't know about the chemically equivalent and magnetic equivalent, I have already uploaded a video on it. You can watch it. I will share the link in the description box. And the previous example, you were having a vicinal protons. So germinal protons, these are non-chemically equivalent and so it will couple with each other. And uh, you can see here, doublet and doublet, it will be there. And uh, now you can see it is quite distorted. The inner peaks are large than the outer peaks. And uh, some points uh, by which you can say that it is a second order spectra, that it uh, the coupling constant value doesn't correspond to the right? splitting. Distorted intensities are there. Chemical shift are not. You can see there is a chemical shift that are not at resonance midpoint, right? So like in case of AX and the multiplicity does not follow the N plus 1 rule. So all these characteristics which I have mentioned here suggest it is a second order spectra. And then AM2, we will take example of 1, 2, 2, trichloroethane. You can notice here uh, AM2 means one will be a doublet, other will be a triplet. So you will get here doublet, triplet type of pattern. So here you have one proton which is getting splitted by the two neighboring protons as a triplet and this one proton will split this proton as a doublet, right? So you have this AM2 spectrum, you can notice here. So A5.77 will split as a triplet because of its neighbor, two neighbor protons. So you are getting a triplet here and uh, here also 
this M2 proton will split by A into a doublet. So, splitting pattern is no, according to the Pascal's triangle, you have a symmetry along the midpoint and it follows the n plus 1 like rule. So, you can say it is a first order spectra. The next is A3X2 system. So, A3X2 you can notice here you have CS3, CS2. A3 means you have 3 protons, X2 means you have 2 protons and A3X2, this X2 is attached to the pH. So, chemical shift is high here compared to this and you have quadrate triplet pattern here which you can notice you have uh, quadrate and triplet. Symmetry along the midpoint, it follows the Pascal triangle, even it follows the N plus 1 rule. It is a first order spectra. You can take any uh, other example of ethanol where I haven't shown OH peak because of uh, it's uh, like uh, it will be chemically exchanged. So, you will see the spectrum peak uh, for CS3, CS2 as quadrate and triplet. Again, it is a first order spectra. Next question that uh, explain the first order and second spin system with suitable example in NMR spectroscopy. Just now we have done and seen the examples related to AB uh, and AX. So, AX is a first order spectra. You can take that example. Uh, either you can take a, a, this uh, A3X2, better to take AX here and the second spin system you can take AB system. Mention the two examples just now we have shown under this answer. So, I will give you some more inputs in this answer that first order spectra is usually have weak coupling del nu uh, by J ratio will be large. So, you can say here this del nu is the chemical shift between the two peak is large here and J value is uh, small. So, this ratio is going to be large and so it is a weak coupling. It follows the N plus 1 rule and uh, the two sets of nuclei are separated by you can see the large chemical difference. So, therefore, it is a first order spectra. For second order spectra, del nu is very small, you can notice here, and the J value is also small. Let's say, like same coupling constant doesn't the value doesn't change with respect to the first order, second order. So, if you divide the small value by small, ultimately you are going to have a small value here, the ratio will give you small. That suggests it is a having a strong coupling and it doesn't obey the n plus 1 rule and here the couplings between the nuclei you have nearly equivalent del value but not exactly the identical one okay so you can see the two signals are very close to each other so nearly equivalent chemical shift value will be there which suggests it is a second order spectra so and uh, it is a complicated one and so, it is interpreted by 2D NMR or 2D COSI. So, now in this diagram, we can notice how this AX is converted into AB system. You can see uh, the del nu is here 300 hertz and the coupling constant value is 10 hertz. And if you divide it, it is giving you 30 hertz, which is greater than 6. So, you have almost uh, first order spectrum. Similarly, uh, you can see when the two peaks are coming closer means the del nu is decreasing from 300 to 30. The J value is not going to be affected that is 10 only. So, 30 divided by 10 you are getting here 3 means it is a now second order spectra and uh, you can notice here the inner peaks are large compared to outer peaks. And uh, so, it is going towards the second order spectra. In the next case, the del nu is now 6 hertz, J value is 10. So, it is still lower and uh, almost uh, the peaks are merged here at the expense of the outer peak and uh, you have almost it is complete, you can say uh, AB spectra from AX to AB, it is approaching AB. And then finally, you can see the lines, all lines are completely merged. There is no spacing left, uh, it is 0 hertz and the coupling constant value does not change. So, ultimately, you are getting the smallest value here, which is a complete AB spectra. So, here how this AX spectrum converted to AB spectrum, you can see by decreasing here del nu, that is the spacing between the two signals. And so, you can say they can ask you a question like uh, 
convert uh, or how we can prove that AX is converted into AB spectrum or uh, how we can prove that by decreasing the den new value it is converting or approaching the AB spectrum and so this diagram is there you can explain it. So I hope you understood the spin systems uh, and the, its example and uh, the points related to first order and second order and hopefully you will incorporate this information in your answers when you are writing the solution for your question in the exams and mostly you can find some questions in the competitive exams as well so all the best till then happy learning